Hey, good morning. Happy Saturday, everybody. This is Greta Ross with Mind Body Soul Shift. So happy to be back with you today. Um, Want to kind of recap on last week, we talked about the seven pillars of health and wellness. And um, I just kind of gave you what the pillars were. Uh, so what I told you I was going to do this week is we're going to kind of just touch on one a week. So we're going to start off with nutritional this week. And the reason why we want to do this is because we want to give you information that's going to help you work toward a better sense of wellness. Okay, and this is going to be one way for you to do that is through your nutrition. So this is Greta Ross with Mind Body Soul Shift. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. And we're back. This is Mind, Body, Soul Shift. And um, as I was saying before, we took the break about the seven pillars. We are going to uh, definitely hit on five of the seven. Um, so let me give you this, the seven, and I'm going to let you know the ones that were that's most important that I think that we, we should touch on. Um, nutritional is number one. That's what we're going to talk about this week. And then we also have a pillar of emotional pillar. We have a social pillar. A, a spiritual pillar, an intellectual pillar, a financial pillar, and an environmental pillar. The pillars that I'm going to focus on the most are going to be five, which is going to be the nutritional, the spiritual, the financial, environmental, and the emotional. Um, those are the five pillars that I want to focus on because that is going to be the pathway to your wellness. And we talked about last week how wellness is actually thriving, and so and we want to thrive. Um, no matter how old we get or how old we are, we still want to be able to thrive. So I know that everybody's journey is going to be different, but um, nutrition is something that affects everybody. So even though it, your journey may be different on getting to the part of being well, on the path of being well, I should say, um, you also have to realize that it is a journey and not, it's not a one size fit all. So what you have to do is you have to look at what you're doing and make your own adjustments. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you information and then you can go and do your research and find out and tweak your own path because, um, you know, you'll need to know exactly what it is, how many calories you need and all that. And I'm not going to go really deep into it. I'm just going to kind of give you some information that's going to help you to start to discover what it is that you need to do. I just want to bring you some awareness. So during my time of studying um, on the nutritional side of, of being well, um, I discovered that um, unhealthy eating habits contribute to obesity, um, and that is an epidemic here in the United States. One third of adults, which is 33%, are obese. That's approximately 17%. So then you have 12.5 million children and adolescents between the age of 2 to 19 that are obese. So here's something that people should understand is that even though you may be at a healthy weight, um, because I'm at a healthy weight, um, it still doesn't mean that you can eat junk. You know what I'm saying? It, you know, because you're still going to have health health risk. And the whole part of eating healthy is to avoid health risk. Yes, you want to maintain your weight, but you also want to avoid health risk. That, that's the reason why you need to know what it is that you need to be consuming, what is going to fuel your body versus having to fight off a disease. Um, if you feed your body the right thing, then you won't have to worry about that because poor weight and a poor diet has been a major con a contributor to uh, diseases such as hypertension, um, even osteoporosis. 
because of, you know, the way our body is structured. So we have to make better choices with the food that we eat. And I think it's really important because we also, most of us who have children or even grandchildren uh, or anyone, husband, wife, whatever, you know, we, we need to watch what we eat because if you, if you notice, let's say a husband and wife, like my husband and I, we always go and get our physicals once a year together. So usually if the doctor comes back and they do lab work and they say, well, uh, whether you have a vitamin D deficiency, well, when my husband tests come back, I'll say, well, probably you have one too, because we do pretty much the same thing. So, and that goes in the opposite direction as well. So if we're eating, you know, the right foods and we're going to have all the things that we need. So if we have a vitamin D deficiency, then we need to step up our game and do something so that we can take care of that. And that's why it's important for us to know what it is that we need to fuel our body. Because there's a risk factor in adults like hypertension, type 2 diabetes increasing in younger people every year. Um, I did a segment with Chef Ebony Dion and we were talking about the staggering numbers of 350,000 new cases of diabetes that was reported. So that's 350,000 new cases that was reported in one year. And most of those were from the ages of 19 to 44. Um, so that lets me know that there's a lot of people whose diet is, is completely off and it's not all hereditary. You know, I know people like to say, well, you know, my mama had diabetes and my grandmama had diabetes. Um, but you know what? A change of diet can change that because I was pre-diabetic, which actually leads to diabetes. However, I had to do something in order to, to change that so that I would not get diabetes. I didn't want to have diabetes. I knew people that were on insulin. Um, and you know, they were at the point in their life where they had been on it for 10 years and they were just tired of sticking themselves with a needle. I didn't want to do that. So I'm like, okay, well, let me do something about this. What can I do to, ch to reverse this? Because it hadn't gone too far to the point where I, I couldn't reverse it. But I had to do something before I got to that point. And my diet was a big part of that. 
So what we have to do is we have to do better so we can teach our children to do better because it's affecting their health as well. So we have to stay focused on our nutrition because that is the link between good health and bad health or even um, you know, getting diseases or um, becoming obese. It's the same thing with our children. That's why you know, we have to take steps toward being cautious and you know, come up with a menu. A week, you know, I'm not saying you got to prep now. I know you're not at that stage, so I'm not sitting here saying, Well, prep your meals. I understand you're not there, but make a conscious decision, come up with a list of what you're going to eat for the week, and that way you can monitor that. You can keep an eye on what it is that you're taking in because you do have to, you know, focus on what it is that you're taking in. That's really, really important um, to help you to stay healthy, to help you stay well. With is where you thrive at. So we're going to take a quick break. This is Greta Ross and we'll be right back. Mind, body, soul, shift. Okay, and we're back. So your question may be, what is a balanced diet? A bi balanced diet is what gives your body the nutrition that it needs to function correctly. Your diet should be a balance of food that is going to give your body the nutrition that it needs to function correctly. And what I mean by that is you want everything inside, things that you can't see. You want all your organs to function. You want your pancreas to function correctly. You want your liver, your lungs, your heart. You want all that stuff to function correctly. But what, what feeds that and what fuels that and what makes sure that it functions correctly is what you put in it. You know how people say you are what you eat. You know, people think that's a cliche, but it's not. It's really, really true. Because every time you eat, you're either fighting a disease or you're feeding a disease. You're either fighting a disease or you're feeding a disease. So when you're fighting it, that means you're giving your body what you need. So you'll need fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, nuts, protein, lean protein. Again, I'm not going to go into all that. I am not a dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist. That, that, that's not what I'm... I'm just, just giving you some basic information. And what I want you to do is to tailor this thing according to your specifications, according to what it is that you need. I don't know what you need, but you can look at how much fruit you're taking in every day. You can look at how, much, how many vegetables you're taking in, if you're eating any nuts at all, any whole grain. You'll know that. So when you make out your menu, that's why it's important to make out the menu. That way, when you make out the menu, you can say, well, uh, I didn't get enough vegetables in this meal. Let me add some more vegetables. And that's why planning out your meals will help you to be cautious of the food that you're taking in that's either fighting your disease or feeding a disease. And these groups right here are major. You need to have them because you need them. Now, we have stuff that, you know, that we know that we probably shouldn't eat, you know, that's not good for our health, <laughs> like bacon and sausage and, you know, cookies and donuts and things of that nature, fruit drinks, ice cream, you know, now I'm not saying that you can't do it, but yes, in moderation, you know, and I'm not saying deny yourself, you know, because I'm not going to sit here and tell anyone that I don't have um, cake every now and again. I do, but that's every now and again. You know, I don't do it often, you know, um, but I limit, I limit it. You know, I know this, like, hey, you know, I haven't had, you know, any chocolate cake in a month. I can have a piece of chocolate cake, you know, but I do it in moderation where it's not, it's not getting out of hand. I don't eat bacon every day. You know, so you have to tailor make this thing according to your specifications. That's why, again, it's important to have a menu. If you set your menu, then that way you know what you're missing. You, you'll know what you're missing, but you don't know if you're missing. You just come in every day and you just start cooking. But you have to understand that you're feeding a disease or you're fighting a disease. So that's why this is so important. And the reason why it's important, because you want to keep your organs and your tissues in your body that needs certain nutrition in order to function. Your body need, your, your, your diet has to consist of the things that your organ needs. Um, like your pancreas, for example, you have to, uh, make sure you're limiting or doing whatever it takes to make sure that you're not overdoing it and, uh, where you have an excess increase of insulin. 
that your body is producing. So therefore, you have to watch what you eat. You know, you, you, you may not be able to eat McDonald's every day, you know. But the food with good nutrition is what helps us to fight the diseases. But you're more prone to diseases when you are not eating the food that your body needs, the nutrition. Um, like your liver, your liver is to purify, you know, the, the junk that the toxins that come in our body. But if your body, if your organ is that, if that organ is not getting what it needs, as far as nutrition that it needs, then how can it function properly? How can it function properly if you're not giving it what it needs to function? It's just like when you have a baby, you know, whether you're breastfeeding or you're bottle feeding, you know you got to feed the baby. So it's the same thing. We have to look at it. We have to nurture this. We have to really take a sense of saying, no, hey, you know what? My liver needs this. You know, my liver has to detoxify my body. And if it's not functioning properly, then what am I taking in? All these toxins that I'm taking in that I can't get rid of because my, my liver is not functioning properly. So you see why it's so important that we give our bodies the nutrition that it needs? Because we either fight a disease or, or we're feeding a disease. And it's important because our children, and they're young. So let's say you have a 10-year-old. And, you know, you're not giving them what they need for their liver to function properly. What, what, what do you think their liver is going to be at by the time they get to be 25? Now, that's something to really think about because that's your child. I mean, yes, you, you may have already gone for the last 25 years, but stop the cycle. Don't, don't let it continue because our diet affects our well-being. It affects our health. It affects our wellness. Not having the proper nutrition leads to you are more prone. You are more prone to hypertension. You're more prone to diabetes. You're more prone to those kind of things. And you're exposing your children to be prone to it too. It's not, don't. Let's look at what we're, what we're taking in. Again, that's why a menu is so important. It says here that the rising level of, of obesity and diabetes in America is the prime effect of poor diet and lack of exercise. Four of the top 10 leading causes of death in the United States is directly influenced by diet. Four of, of the 10 top leading causes of death in the United States is directly influenced by your diet. And here are the diseases that are just directly tied to this. Heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes. Heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes. <laughs> That's why you have to come up with a menu and pay attention to what you're putting in your body because you're either fighting a disease or you're feeding a disease. And you have to choose which one you're going to do. And not just for you, for your family. Because you want everybody in your household to be well. This is Greta Ross with Mind Body Social. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hey, Greta Ross here, and we're back. Uh, we were talking about the nutritional value, what we need in order to thrive, uh, to stay well, and to um, not understand that we need to understand that every time that we eat, we're either 
fighting a disease or we're feeding a disease. Um, so let me just give you some things. We talked about um, the things that you would need to consume um, to avoid becoming prone to heart disease, cancer, stroke, and diabetes. Um, so let's talk about now, let's talk about how to achieve a balanced diet. Um, you know, if we have an opportunity to, uh, to have a nutritionist or know someone um, that is um, in that field that would be able to assist you with um, helping you put some meals together or plan menus so that you can be aware of what you're, to make sure that your, your diet is balanced, um, then, you know, by all means, take advantage of that. Um, but here's the thing. The core of the balanced diet are the foods that are low in unnecessary fats and sugars and high in vitamins and minerals and other nutritions that the body and the organs need. Uh, you know, just follow the basic food groups. Of course, you know you need the fresh fruit. Um, I'm a country girl. I grew up in North Carolina. And what I learned growing up there, you know, we had um, pecan trees and apple trees and plum trees and grapevines and strawberry patches and um, pear trees. Um, so I knew, I understood when those things were in season. So if you want to get the best nutritional value, always choose fruit that's in season. Um, you know, I have a thing about, and this is just me. Hey, I can't speak for nobody else. I have a thing about eating stuff with no seeds in it. It just doesn't seem natural to me. You know, how is this stuff being reproduced if there's no seed? Because my understanding from the word of God that everything, every seed re reproduces after itself. And if there's no seed, then how is this being reproduced? So I don't trust it, but that's just me. I can't speak for nobody else. So, um, eat fruit that's in season. You know, uh, we're getting ready. We're in October. Watermelon is not in season. It, you know, yeah, you can buy it. I'm not saying that you can't buy it. I'm saying it's not in season. So, you know, try to buy fresh fruit that's in season, whatever the season is, if it's grape season, if it's, you know, watermelon season, cantaloupe, so whatever the season is, collard green season, whatever the season is, buy your fruits and vegetables according to them being in season at that time. You get more nutritional value from them. Okay, um, because later on I'm going to show you some um, just, I want to just kind of demonstrate as far as like life shelf and the importance of being able to eat fresh versus something that you get off the shelf. Um, again, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just looking at dates and, you know, being able to share what I have. So that way it, you will bring it to your attention as well. Now, you have to understand that um, the fresher the fruit, the more nutrition that it provides for your body. Uh, but fruits are naturally high in sugar, naturally high in sugar. So you make sure that you choose your fruit wisely and, and just, you know, monitor that, especially if you're a diabetic, um, you know, so just monitor what you're eating. Again, that's why if you have an opportunity to have a nutritionist or sit with someone who is, that can help you to get on the right track, that would be great. Um, so next are the vegetables again. Um, you know, if you could eat what's in season, um, that would be great um, because the vegetables are, are the primary essential source of vitamins. The vegetables are like the dark leafy green, like the, the kale and the collard greens, you know, those kind of things are very, very high in nutrition. Um, you know, and you could, you know, I don't know, I don't really get tired of, I could eat spinach and kale, collard greens every day, but, you know, I kind of do my own thing to them, you know, just kind of mix it up a little bit so that way I don't get tired of it. Plus it's, you know, it's really good for me. Um, so the spinach, the kale, the green greens, broccoli, um, collard greens, those kind of things, uh, the dark color leafy, um, green vegetables, those are very, very high in the nutrition that you need. So make sure that you're getting your, um, the value um, with the amount of uh, vegetables that you need on a daily basis because you need them every day. Um, next, you need to look at whole, taking in whole grain versus using, you know, white flour or white bread. Look at um, the value. Whole wheat has more value than the white white wheat. So, uh, plus the white is actually processed too. So, you might want to look at um, the bread that you're taking in and uh, maybe make a switch gradually to the whole grain side. 
Next, we want to talk about protein. Um, again, I'm not going deep with all this because I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just trying to give you some outlines of things that you need to look at adding to your diet if you don't already have them in your diet. The protein, which is the meat and the beans, is the primary source of protein. Um, it's an essential source of the protein. That's the part that actually, you know, that's the, the what builds the muscle, the protein does. Um, but you want to eat low-fat meat, such as chicken or fish, uh, certain cuts of pork and beef, uh, but just certain cuts, uh, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna eat that, um, remove the skin, you know, trim off any visible fat that you may see um, to reduce the amount of cholesterol that you're actually taking in in the meat. Um, just be mindful of that whenever you're fixing your your um, your protein. Nuts and beans are also a good source of protein. I love nuts. Um, not so much beans, um, but I love nuts. Um, so I do eat a lot of nuts and I do eat beans, but probably not as often as I should. But that is a really, really good source of protein. Um, and they have so many health benefits. So you should try adding some beans or uh, peas, almonds, sunflower seeds, walnuts. Try some soy products as well. Um, no, I'm not a milk drinker. I've never been a milk drinker. I didn't really grow up on milk. Um, but you still have to have your vitamin D. Um, and that is a good way to get it. But uh, you may want to look at soy-based products um, because it gives you an excellent source of protein. And it's, in a, hel it's a healthy alternative um, to, uh, to soy milk or even with meat. Um, you can use soy as a substitute uh, for meat and still get the protein that you need, such as plant-based milk. Um, my granddaughter has never actually had whole milk before. Um, she has only had soy milk when she was able, old enough to drink. Of course, you know, she was on formula growing up as a baby, but um, she's never had like the milk that you just go and buy. She's always drunk soy milk. And when she <laughs> drinks regular milk, it t tastes funny to her because that's all she knows. So she started out with plant-based milk, um, So which is actually a good thing. So try to kind of convert over from the whole milk to the plant-based um, because you'll find that it will be actually better for you um, because you're getting what you need. Now, they, they have different kinds. They have the flavors. Um, which, um, you know, if you think the taste is not your thing, um, they have vanilla, they also have almond soy milk, um, you know, and, you know, I'm not, I don't know anything about tofu, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, if you want to, you know, get into that, you could, um, get with someone who actually, um, knows about that as far as the protein level, as far as tofu is concerned. But, um, the... Soy milk is definitely a alternative to cow's milk, and, and I definitely recommend that uh, that you make that switch um, because plant-based almost anything is better than what's actually being produced. So we're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to have some products on the table that I just want to kind of look at. I want to look at the dates and look at the products and just kind of talk about that a little bit um, because, you know, you're, you're buying stuff off the shelf. And no, I know a lot, a lot of people don't look at the contents of what's in it. Um, they don't look at the date. They don't look at, you know, stuff that is in this product that they can't even pronounce. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to do that. I'm just going to look at certain things that I want to bring to your awareness. So that way when you're shopping, you will have that awareness. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. This is Greta Ross. We'll be right back. We're back, Brother Ross, Mind, Body, Soul, Shift. So I have a couple of products on the table. Um, most of them are, you know, pretty house, 
household items that you know most people would buy um you know pretty much anybody that goes shopping that have a family um so what i want to do is i want to just kind of i'm gonna start with this this is actually chocolate pudding okay not gonna show you who makes it but this chocolate pudding um you know you have to add um you know water you have to beat it you know but as far as the ingredients are concerned oh that's not it um okay of course we have sugar starch okay and the rest of this stuff i can't even pronounce okay but here's the point this is instant pudding and it says best sell by july 2020 july 2020 so let's say we bought this a couple months ago i'm just saying i don't know but let's just say we did let's say we bought it in july of 2019 my question is this what is in this product that makes it that it can stay good that you and i can consume it until July of 2020 and it says best sale by July that's what this, it says best sale by July 2020 well what's in this product that makes it last that long now I'm not a scientist again I'm not a nutritionist I, I and it's a real question it's something that I've always asked myself and you know people always say you know you're just a little over the top well you know maybe I am but you know it's a real concern even more so now you know, some people think I'm paranoid. <laughs> well, whatever. But seriously, on a serious tip, what is in this to make this last into July of 2020? Okay, so I don't have an answer to that question. But here's a better question that I hope someone will be able to answer for me. If we don't know what's in it to make it last into 2020, and it's something, obviously. It's got to be something. It's got to be something. So what is that something? So since we can't identify that something, then here's a better question. What is that something doing to our body? If we don't know what that something is that can preserve this until July of 2020, then if we don't even know what that is that can preserve this that long, then how do we know what it's doing to the inside of our body? That's pudding. I like pudding personally. Okay, here's another product. This is bow tie pasta. Okay, now I didn't grow up in an Italian home. I grew up around some, well, I didn't grow up around them, but you know, the older I got when I left home, I knew some Italian people and they would make fresh pasta. Come out homemade, it would roll out the dough, they would put it in a machine, they would cut it. If it was bow tie, they had a machine for that. If it was spaghetti, they had a machine for that. They made homemade pasta every day. Every day they had pasta. It was fresh. Now this product says that best if sold, if used by June 14th, 2022. Bowtie pasta. So let me ask you, do you think you'll get more nutritional value? And I'm not saying make your own pasta because I don't make my own pasta. That's not what I'm saying. Don't hear that. You know, I'm not saying you got to get in the kitchen and become, you know, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying pay attention to that. And they do have in the uh, refrigerator section where they have fresh pasta that you can buy. Um, but the expiration date, of course, is a lot sooner because it's fresh. So, 2022, you can have this on your shelf until 2022. So, again, what's in it that make it last that long? So, what? So let's say we keep this on the shelf for another, I don't know, to next year, 2020. And then we eat it. But it says it's good until 2022. So, I should be good, right? You should be good, right? Really? I mean, seriously, what's in it that's making it stay so good until 2022? 
How can this be good into 2022? And what is the nutritional value? Really, how much nutritional value are we really getting from this? Okay. Here's something else I want to address. This is mac and cheese, okay? You know, the kind that you has a little squeeze, you squeeze the cheese in the pot and you stir it up, okay? This, is, this has that in there, okay? Now, organic, that's what it says. Okay, let me see. Where did I see the data? Oh, here we go. This says May the 17th, 2020. Organic, but it's supposed to have cheese in it. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you honestly think real cheese could sustain itself into 2020? Uh, May the 17th, 2020 should be direct. Do, do you think that real cheese could actually last that long? So what is it in the cheese that makes it last until May 17th, 2020? So let's say you had this for a month and you keep it on your shelf because the box says that it's good until May 17th, 2020. So let's say you want to have this for Thanksgiving dinner. You're not going to eat it. Now you're just going to keep it. So you're just stocking up. You still have months to go before this is even supposed So what's in this cheese that says organic that is possible for me to eat this by May 17, 2020? What is it? I mean, that's a real live question, people. I'm so serious, man. I'm so serious. This is real. And I just want to know. What is it? So now on the good side, we're going to take. I love trail mix. Omega-3, which my body needs. Okay, so we have cranberries, walnuts, almonds, pecans, sunflower seeds. What else? Macadamia nuts, hazelnuts. Pistachios, peanuts, all healthy, good for you. You're getting the servings that you need per cup, per day. That's why it's so important. Okay, so let's look at the date on here. Now, this says that this is good until June 9th of 2020. So let's see, a nut. A nut will last that long. Because if you have nuts in a, in a shell, you know, because you know, I grew up with pecans, so I know about pecans. I know how long they would last. You know, they come in season, you know, they have the outer shell, the outer shell and the outer shell, the green part, then they have the inside where the brown part is, then it has the meat where the, where the pecan itself is. So it, you know, it has all those layers, but um, all this stuff is good for you. You, you need omega-3 on a daily. But, but you know, I, I just wanted to bring this to your attention because I just think that it's, you know, it's a real question that people should ask themselves. You know, how, how can this stuff stay good so long? And, and what is it doing to my body that it can stay? How, how is that possible? I mean, is that a question that anybody else asks besides me? Or am I just like the only one? I, you know, clearly I just don't, I just can't believe that I'm the only person that would think that way. You know, how stuff can last. And maybe it's because of the way I grew up. Maybe it's because I was exposed to fresh. You know, we planted our own collars. We planted our own watermelon. We planted our own, you know, uh, green beans. You know, we snapped them. We, we bleached them. We put them in the freezer. We, we did all that, you know. And I, could, and, I, and I could tell the difference, you know. You know, I was, you know, I grew up on, you know, healthy food. Food that we planted and we harvested and we put it in the freezer. And we ate on it all season, all winter, until it was time to plant again. But now, you know, and here's my thing again. I'm going to get on my soapbox because I think it's important that we pay attention to this kind of stuff. You know, when we have all these big organic companies that say this is organic, and this is just, you know, mac and cheese. But what about the vegetables? You know, they, they, they spray uh, stuff on there because they want to keep the bugs up because they want to have a harvest. And we, we did the same thing. We would use stuff to dust the, the plants, to you know, but back then it was different. And But 
not only did it get on the plant itself, but some of it fell on the ground. You know, it's like trying to water your garden without getting wet. It, you can't do that. So when we would put the dusting on the ground, I mean, on the plant, some fell on the ground. You could see it when you would walk down the, the road. You could see the, the sprinkles from where we dusted the plant. So if the ground was was received the the, the a pesticides or whatever it is, whatever that stuff was, we put on the plant to keep the bugs off. If it got on the ground and it kept the bugs off, then you know whatever was in it clearly was something in it that kept the bugs off. Now we didn't know if it brought us any harm because clearly, I mean, here I am, sixty-two years later, you know, um, didn't don't have no reports of anything that that may have affected me from that time frame. So I just have to assume that maybe it was okay. But nowadays you see all this these lawsuits going on because they're spraying the fields with all this stuff and it's getting on the fruits and the vegetables that we have to eat. Well, my question is, if, if, if you're wearing a mask and you're getting a, affected by this stuff and you're spraying it on the food that we have to eat, then I mean, aren't we eating it? I mean, if it's affecting your body and you're fully protected, you like you just came out of a hazmat uh, convention while you're spraying down this food, but we have to consume that. And the other question is, now that it's on the plant, then it gets on the ground. Now the ground is contaminated. So now it's a vicious cycle. You're planting seeds into a ground that's contaminated. How much nutritional value is actually in the ground? Because that's where the nutrition comes from when you talk about plants. It comes from the ground. But how much nutritional value can we be getting if the, if the ground is contaminated? You know, but that's, hey, that's just my soapbox. That's just what I believe. And because I, I grew up in that environment, my grandfather would burn the field like every so often because he said the earth had to replenish itself. He says in order for it to, so he would burn everything in the field. We'd go out there and we would get on the track and we would till the land again. And he would give it a rest, which meant he didn't plant anything. He didn't fertilize anything. He would give the land a rest. And the next year that we planted something, it was just flourishing. You know, no, I don't know, no, no, nothing about all that farming and stuff. I knew he had an almanac, which was something most of y'all probably don't even know nothing about. He had an almanac and he followed that and that's what he did. But the results of it worked. So I can't even argue with it because I saw it with my own eyes for 18 years. So I know it worked. And I ate the best food for 18 years because we planted our own food. We ate our own chickens and our own livestock. We knew exactly what we were feeding our hogs. We knew exactly what we were feeding our hogs. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, this is Greta Ross with Mind Body Soul Chef. We'll be right back. Okay, I had to video this. The reason why I had to video it is because a picture is not going to do it justice. You actually have to see this. I mean, like, really see it. Have you ever seen an apple on the inside? Can you get out my light, please? I just want to see Have it. you ever seen an apple that looked like this? This is insane. That is not the way a core of an apple is supposed to look. And there's no seeds. How do you make an apple with no seeds? That is my question. And what is that white stuff on the inside? And we're supposed to eat this? Come on, y'all. What's up with that? This is this is a real apple. This is this is not see? A green apple. It's real. I'm just trying to figure out what in the world is going on with this apple. Hey, Greta Ross here, my body social. We're back. I am off my soapbox. Um, but no, it, those are things that are really um, a concern to me um, in reference to you know what I take into my body. I have a really, really concern. I mean, I it's such a conviction for me that um, you know I, I question that kind of stuff because I think that I should. Um, I think you should too. I don't think I should be the only one asking those questions. It's like, well, wait a minute. I, you know, how is that possible? You know, and you know, hey, granted, you know, I'm all for advancement and technology and all that stuff. You know, but I think some things is just better left alone, man. You know, you just you just can't something you can't improve on. You know what I'm saying? You can't improve on nature. You know, you put a seed in the ground and you get the harvest from it. That, that's nature. You don't get no better than that. You know, why you gotta be you know, I saw probably like about three or four years ago, I was, you know, um surfing the web looking for some information. And, uh, and actually it was about nutrition. It just so happened I came across this thing where, I don't know if it was in China or Japan, wherever it was, um, they were doing this thing where they were um, creating a square, a box, 
a box, watermelon. And I looked at it and I was like, are they serious right now? It's like, how do you do that? I mean, you know, I mean, I don't have to know, you know, how they did it. It's just the point that you would actually, you know, I just think you just, some things you just take too far. You know, a watermelon is a watermelon, you know, and it should have seeds. You know, people think, well, that's just inconvenience to have to, really? <laughs> it don't seem weird to you that you eat a watermelon without a seed? That that's not weird to you? It's not weird that you eat grapes without a seed? That's not weird to you? That's weird to me. Maybe because I grew up with, you know, things that I knew that had to produce after some kind, like our three or four apple trees that we had. You know, we had a we had a good harvest off those trees. Look, when we wanted a snack, you know what we did? We went to the apple tree. We didn't go to McDonald's. When we wanted a snack, you know, we would go get some strawberries or go sit under the grapevine because that's where the strawberry patch was. We'd go sit under the grapevine and we'd just sit there and just chill. You know? But now, I, you have to question. You have to question it because, again, you're either fighting a disease or you're feeding a disease. And that's why it's important to know this information. Now, again, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a chef. I'm just gathering information and bringing it to your awareness because guess what? It was brought to my awareness. So I need to help everybody else understand how important this is because there's so many things that we, we open ourselves up to that we don't have to. So not only by adding certain foods to our diet um, is going to benefit us, but there's certain things that we should kind of try to stay away from in just in moderation and alcohol, um, you know, like solid fat, saturated fats, trans fats, things like that. We have to pay attention to them. And alcohol, you know, it has a lot of calories and it does put the weight on you. I've never been a drinker. You know, every now and again, I don't have mind having a glass of wine. Um, but, you know, just like every blue moon, I think I probably had maybe two glasses of wine all year. We're in October, but I'm not I'm not a person that consumes alcohol. Um, but you still need to pay attention to your intake because, you know, of course, the alcohol affects your liver. So in order to keep your liver functioning properly, you have to make sure that you're not doing overdoing it. You know, do it in moderation. You know, go do your studies on your body weight and what you should be consuming because everybody is different. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. This is Greta Ross with Mind Body Social. Okay, and we're back here with my body soul shift. Um, uh, I think the takeaway here is moderation, um, paying attention to what it is that you're taking in your body and ask yourself, is this fighting a disease or am I feeding a disease? Ask yourself that question every time you eat because that's an important question that you have to ask yourself. And the reason why it's important is because if you're fighting a disease, then you know that it's for your benefit. But if you're feeding a disease, then you can expect trouble in the long run. So that's why this question is so important. Am I fighting a disease by what I'm eating or am I feeding a disease by what I'm eating? Am I feeding cancer? Am I feeding high blood pressure? Or am I fighting it? Am I fighting high blood pressure by taking in the greens and the vegetable and the other vegetables and the, the nuts and, and watching how, what I eat? That all that stuff plays a part of your health, where you're gonna be at. You know, I, I you know, when you when you, when I talk to young people, you know, and I was young once, you know, it's like you know, who, who, you don't think you're gonna get 50, 60, you know, you don't think about that stuff when you're like 25. You know what I'm saying? You don't think about being 50, you don't think about being 60. But the older you get, you understand what's really important. But if I could get you 
to understand this at a young age, or if you could pass this information on to someone else who was young and it could benefit them, it will help them in the long run. Because every person that I've had on the show um, up in age, let's say 80 plus, like my mother-in-law and Cindy Carter, they had, they ate well. Not only did they exercise, but they ate well. So this has a big part to play in your, your thriving in life. 14 classes a week, what aerobics? 81, as a matter of fact, she's about to be 82. And she does that, but her diet, because she's not feeding a disease. She's fighting a disease every time she puts something in her mouth. I need you to pay attention to whether you're fighting a disease or you're feeding a disease. Because that's gonna be the difference of you living and thriving, of being healthy or living a life of wellness. There's a difference. And not only that, but you, your children, your grandchildren, this is something generation you can pass on. Because people are quick to say, oh, well, my big mama had, or my grandmother had. Well, if you can say that, then say, hey, I pass this on. If you won't pass on anything, pass something on good. This is good information, and we all need it. We all need to know if we're fighting a disease or if we're feeding a disease. We all need to know that. Every day. Every day that we eat, every time you put something in your mouth, I need you to ask yourself that question. Because if you're feeding a disease, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse and worse. You're going to find yourself at the doctor, on prescription medication, one pill leading to another pill. You're going to be on one pill now, and in another year, you're going to be on fives. It's easier to prevent something from happening versus trying to fix it. So before it gets to the point of you having to fix it, let's identify it, let's get a handle on it, and then let's resolve it. Because it's time out. It really is. We've been doing this too long, having too many excuses, and not handling our business. And it's affecting generations. It's not just affecting you. You talk about Big Mama all the time. She at least two generations behind you. So now what? Now you got to affect the next two coming up. So we got to get serious about our health, people. We got to get serious about our wellness so we can thrive and do what we've been called to do. We all have a purpose. We all have an assignment. This is Greta Ross. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to wrap this thing up. We're going to talk about what's coming up next week. This is Greta Ross. We'll be right back. Hey, Greta Ross here. We're back, Mind, Body, Soul Shift. So as we wrap up this, um, this episode of uh, Mind, Body, Soul Shift, talking about the seven pillars of uh, health and wellness, um, we talked about nutritional, the nutritional pillar today. Um, the, I really want you to be able to take this away with you that without good nutrition, your body is more prone to diseases, infections, and fatigue. Without good nutrition, your body is, is more prone to diseases, infection, and fatigue. And not only that, but so are your children. So what you may want to do is understand that it's affecting their, their health, their wellness, their growth, their development, and their academic performance. 
It affects all that. And not only that, but it also could be with them long term. So that's why it's important that you identify what it is that you're taking to your body, whether you're fighting a disease or feeding a disease. And pay attention to that because not only is it affecting you, but it's also affecting your whole entire family, your children, your spouse, everyone. So I just wanted to kind of recap on this pillar because I think it's one of the, the probably the foundation um, of us staying well. Um, you know, healthy is good, but well is where you thrive. So we, we want to focus on wellness. And nutrition is a huge, huge part of that. That is your foundation. You got to get that right. Because without it, you're asking for trouble. You are asking for trouble. Um, so we talked about the nutritional this week. And next week, with next week we are going to talk about uh, the financial pillar. Um, that is going to be our next week's show. So uh, hopefully you got your notes out from last week that I asked you to take down and write down all the pillars. So let's just go over them again, which we just covered nutritional. So we just, we just got that one out the way. So we also have um, emotional, spiritual, financial, and environmental. Um, and then there's also social and intellectual, but we're not going to touch on those. We, but we definitely need to focus on financial, emotional, and environmental and spiritual. Um, so th that's what we have coming up next. But next week, we're going to talk about the financial pillar and how it actually affects your health and wellness. You wouldn't think that it would, but I'm telling you, when your finances is off balance, um, you're concerned about things, you don't know how you're going to pay the bills, baby need a new pair of shoes, you got more month than you got money, we're going to talk about all that because that brings on stress and we need to address it. We need to talk about it. So if you got your little uh, notes going on, next week we want to talk about financial. So this, this coming up week... What I want you to do is I want you to examine your financial pillar. Examine, you examine your financial pillar. And look and see if there's any cracks or if it's, any, if it's weak anywhere. Or where it can even be improved because there's always room for improvement. If there's anything in your financial pillar that will help improve the quality of your life and eliminate stress. That's why we're going to talk about the financial pillar. So this is Greta Ross with Mind, Body, Soul Shift. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you on next week where we're going to be talking about the financial pillar. So make sure you bring your pen and paper, take your notes, and do your own examination of your path to wellness. So we'll see you next week. Greta Ross, Mind, Body, Soul Shift. We're out. <music>